Can a booger kill you? I'm talking about those dust boogers you get after you've been in the workshop. If dust plugs your nose, what does it do to your lungs? According to the CDC, sawdust is a group one carcinogen, the same classification as asbestos. Of course, they also classify red meat and alcohol as a group one carcinogen, and I refuse to give those up. But I don't recommend that you consume steak and booze on an industrial level. And likewise, if you work in an industry where you inhale lots of sawdust without protection, you may get cancer. But what about the rest of us in our small woodworking shops? Are we safe to inhale all the dust we want? No. Because wood dust causes respiratory illnesses like asthma and bronchitis in far greater numbers than cancer. Some folks never have a problem. Others are fine for years, but then it catches up to them later in life. They wish they'd taken better care of themselves when they were younger. My point is what we do today can affect the quality of our life in a big way tomorrow. So why take the risk when it's so easy to protect our lungs? These are common forms of lung protection, but they're not all equal. Each has its own set of pros and cons, and choosing the right one for you can make a big difference. Let's start with the simple paper or cloth mask. These are cheap and abundant, and most of them are absolute junk. You can identify the worst ones by the straps. If it only has one strap, it's not going to fully seal on your face. And if it leaks, you may as well not be using it. Even the two strap models are difficult to seal in my opinion. They usually leak around the nose despite that little metal strip that's supposed to customize the fit. If it fogs your glasses, it's leaking. Here's another thing you need to look for in a dust mask, the NIOSH rating. This is a national standard that tells you how effective the mask will be, assuming that it seals fully on your face. It's always an N, an R, or a P, followed by a number between 95 and 100. The number indicates how effective the filtration is. For example, a 95 will remove 95% of particles larger than 3 tenths of a micron. If the number's higher, it'll remove more of those particles. The letter lets you know how resistant the mask is to oils. Now we're not talking about fumes from oil finishes. We're talking about petroleum, such as you may find in a machine shop. If petroleum from your hands or the air gets on or in the filters of a mask, it can degrade them. An N rating means it has no resistance to petroleum degradation. An R means it's petroleum resistant, and a P means it's petroleum proof. N for no, R for resistant, P for proof. This confuses some people, so I want to be clear. Don't buy a P100 rated mask and think you can breathe in fumes. It will not protect you. You need an activated carbon filter to breathe in fumes. These NIOSH ratings only refer to particle protection, not gas protection. For woodworking, N, R, or P are all fine ratings. As for the number, I try to get 100 because I don't really see a need to breathe in 5% of the fine dust as I would with a 95 rated mask when I can just get all the dust with a 100 rated one. Do not wear a dust mask without a NIOSH rating. And again, I can't stress enough, these things have to fully seal on your face to work or you may as well not have it on. That's why a lot of people throw these away and instead they use more substantial cartridge respirators like these. They're made with a non-latex rubber that's going to seal on your face really well unless you have a beard. If you buy one of these larger ones, there are some features that I highly recommend that you look for. First, you want an exhale valve that points downward. This will help keep it from fogging up your safety glasses. You also want one that's easy to take off and put on. This one has a quick release on the front, so you don't have to tighten and loosen the straps every time. And keep in mind, this style comes in small, medium, and large sizes. If you go online and just add one to your cart without choosing a size, you're gonna get a small, and it's probably not gonna fit you. So keep that in mind. This style takes cartridge filters, which have the same NIOSH ratings for particle filtration. You can also use this same mask to protect you from fumes if you swap to an activated carbon cartridge. That makes this type of mask versatile, but I find them too bulky to wear for long periods of time, especially for just dust protection. And the filters kind of block my vision sometimes when I'm looking down at my work. So I prefer a more compact mask like this one here. It sort of combines the compact fit and comfort of a small paper mask with the protection of a bigger respirator. It has the same rubber body, to seal on my face well, 
It has the downward facing exhaust on each side so I won't fog up my glasses. And inside are replaceable filters with that 100 NIOSH rating. But this is just for particle filtration, not dust fumes. I still use the larger respirator with activated carbon filters for wood finishing. But most of us spend far more time sawing and sanding than we do finishing. Most of our time, we only need dust protection. So to me, it's worth having a separate, more comfortable mask for that purpose. I can wear this for most of my work, and then I can wear this when I'm working with finishes and solvents. I'll put affiliate links to these masks below this video so you can choose which suits you best. Whatever option you choose though, the question is how often should you change the filters? It's pretty simple. If it gets hard to breathe, change them. An old filter isn't going to let fine dust through, so there's no danger if you use it a little bit too long. You'll know when it feels like it's beginning to restrict the airflow and that's when you change the filters. I like to keep mine sealed in a bag or a case, but that's not much of a factor with dust filters since you have to be pulling air through them to draw in the dust. However, if you have the activated carbon filters installed in a respirator, you definitely want to seal those in a container because they will absorb from the air and go bad over time. You'll know those are bad when you can smell fumes even though you're wearing your mask. There are other mask styles out there. Some are cloth that can be washed. Others look like something you'd see someone wearing on a snowmobile. My problem with many of these is they don't fully seal on your face. You should be able to take off the filters, cover the holes with your hands, and suffocate yourself. No air should get through. If you can do that, and the filters have a good NIOSH rating, then it's a good mask. Otherwise, it's junk. Now before I wrap up, I know I'll get questions from bearded woodworkers. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options for you out there. To me, good enough isn't good enough. The only thing that will fully protect you is a full face respirator. <laughs> I use this one when I'm turning, and it's popular among bearded woodworkers for all workshop tasks because it has a fan inside that pulls air in through the top through filters and gently blows clean air down across your face inside. This creates positive pressure so it doesn't have to seal completely around your chin and neck. And I actually find that light breeze across the top of my face to be pretty nice in, on a hot day in the shop. But they're not cheap. I guess that's the price you bearded folks pay for looking so nice. Again, I'll put affiliate links to these masks below this video. Just click to expand the description. I hope this information helps you breathe better in the workshop for many years to come. If you sharpen your tools by hand, do yourself a favor. Try one of Trend's diamond stones. You can start with a card, but before long, you'll want a full bend stone because these things cut fast, they stay perfectly flat, and you can go from stone to strop to wood and be back to work in under a minute. I'll link to my favorites in the notes below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.